Welcome to the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. What is up, everyone? I hope you're having a beautiful day. We're going to get into part two of the Gospel of Mary Magdalene and looking at uh, some really cool stuff here in chapter five. As I shared earlier, uh, we were in chapter four. The Gospel of Mary Magdalene is uh, chapter four, chapter five, chapter eight, and chapter nine. The rest of the chapters are missing or were um, too bad off to be able to interpret. So uh, that's what we we're left with. I shared a little bit of the history about Gospel of Mary Magdalene earlier in the broadcast uh, on the, the episode this morning. So if you haven't watched that, you can go back and check it out over on my YouTube channel as well as the podcast audio apps. So, all right, got to check on the dog, make sure we're good to go here. So getting into chapter five today, we're going to dive in. Uh, this is such an exploration of reality, um, the divine concepts of reality. Um, we looked in the last chapter that we were in and we talked about the nature of reality. So just again to read chapter four, verse 22, it says the Savior said, all nature, all formations, all creatures exist in and with one another and they will be resolved again into their own roots okay so such a transcendental ideology here expanding forth from uh the savior or christ or jesus or whatever you want to call him and uh as we look deeper into this uh it's it just gets even more real as we go and I love the Gnostic Gospels. So, uh, like I said, if you haven't watched episode one, go back, watch that, uh, and it'll prepare you for what we're going to talk about on this episode. Uh, what is up, everyone? Thank you for being here, Meta X. Uh, Angel Appleseed, what is up? Welcome, my friend. Real Deal, thank you for being here. Jabe, thank you for joining. Uh, Base, thank you for being here. Uh, who else do we have? A bunch of people joining here. Nowhere Man, thank you for being here. If you don't know me, my name is Cub Cooker. My real name is Jacob, but my friends call me Cub, and you should too. Um, I am all about helping your mind yield the hope of spirit. That is what I call mythos. Now, the regular definition for mythos is uh, the operating system that we all run on. It's a set of agreements about a thing. Uh, in, in this case, about ourselves about the origin of self, the divine self. And that's what I study here on this channel. I do it through faith, spirituality, and paranormal discussion. Uh, I'm a mystic, a light worker, and a mentor. I teach self-awareness through thoughts, emotions, energies, and actions. Those are the four yogas. And guys, above all, I value inclusion of all races, religions, and orientations. So anything that I say is not against anyone else. This is not a conspiratorial channel. This is a, a love and light and unity with all channel. So I believe you can take everything I'm saying and you can still practice uh, any religion, any walk of life, anything like that. This is a transcendent message that I'm sharing. So I'm not here to sway anyone in any direction, but rather uh, give you more, open up your your consciousness even more and allow you to design and construct your own life based on this new information, new data uh, that you might receive today. So uh, I strive to give love infinitely. I think that that's the number one thing everyone in this group, everyone in this community is all about giving love infinitely. Uh, if you're here and you're here to be kind and seek deeply um, and have an open mind with all of this, then you are totally welcome. That's what we are here for. So thank you for being a part of this. What is the divine spark? Metanosis is asking. Uh, Metanosis, I'm pretty sure you probably know what it is. Um, I believe it is that Christ energy. I believe it's that logos uh, that I think we have tried to understand for uh, for centuries. What is the logos? Logos, the divine expression, um, or the computation, the computation. So, uh, Weekend eighty two says, "Do you think Jesus is Satan?" Absolutely not. Uh, I do believe that there is a chance he could be Lucifer. We won't get into that today, but there's a lot of um, a lot of similarities between Christ and Lucifer. 
um, and Lucifer not being this bad thing, by the way, which is how we've constructed him, of course, in our mythologies. Um, but if you if you've watched my Yalda Bayoth video, then you'll understand why I can say that and still sit here comfortably. Um, because I, I'm not I'm more of a Gnostic and a Marcionite in the fact that I believe the God of the Old Testament was not the father that Christ was speaking of. Um, and as far as the whole Jesus is Lucifer thing, um, I have, you know, there's enough data for me to believe it either way. Um, because, you know, he, he was bringing light back into the world. He said, when I'm in the world, there is light. Uh, Lucifer is always, you know, I always thought they were brothers just from hearing the description of them. Yeah. The day star, morning star, uh, similarities, like what, what's the deal with them? Why are they so similar in their, um, descriptions like, Hmm, what's up with that? Um, but when you really get into it, you're like, well, maybe they're not so different. Maybe they are the same, uh, especially when you look at it in light of, um, you know, the context of, uh, repairing these timelines that people had fallen into all of these systems of sacrifice and control. And like, uh, no one was escaping their sins and everyone was trying to follow the law. People were, uh, misinterpreting that, you know, much like we have today, you know, and by the way, religious law is what I'm talking about here. So, um, metanosis says it has to do with yin and yang ma mapping the consciousness. There's a dark and light vibration in everyone. Metanosis, I am not that type of Gnostic. There is a type of Gnostic that is a dualistic Gnostic, and I don't believe in dualism. Um, I believe, like Christ spoke of, my Father is light. In him there is no darkness at all. That is what I follow. And I, I am a light worker because of that. I believe in magnifying the light within myself and others. So that's what I focus on. Uh, there's plenty of people that do shadow work. Uh, I think it's important to like work through that stuff, but, um, that's really not my gift. That's not why I'm here. So, um, I can't justify that because I tried to do that with like the, the old Testament God and then the father that Christ talked about. And as I shared this morning, you know, I, I got a bit emotional about it because, uh, all it did was try to destroy me, uh, quite, quite literally. So, um, you know, there, there's people that, that probably knew me when I was younger and didn't understand what, um, what type of internal turmoil was going on because I have all these conflicting belief systems that were all coming out of the same place, by the way. Uh, but when your operating system is messed up, you're messed up. And so again, that's, that's why I teach what I teach. That's why we have the mythos community, because I think it's important for your mind to yield the hope of the spirit um, and what does that even mean, by the way, that, that, that sounds like an abstract idea, but like your mind is not just your brain. It's your whole mind. It's your body. It's your experiences. It's your memories. It's the energy around you. It is your, um, entire metaphysical makeup. It is your mind connecting to a higher mind. Um, and we talk a lot about on this channel about yielding fruit. And so your mind, your everything, your being yielding, giving the fruit of, um, uh, the hope of spirit. Now, what is hope? Hope is, uh, love. Hope is the sun coming up. Hope is light. Hope is, uh, repair. Hope is forgiveness. Hope is like all of these good things, right? Like all of the fruits that we want to manifest. Um, and, and then what is spirit? Well, people have studied that for years, um, decades, centuries, even, um, you know, spirit is that thing which we cannot describe, but we all know we have, right? Um, and so that hope of spirit, the father and spirit, as Christ spoke of, uh, the kingdom within all of those things is where, um, is where I'm coming from with this. So with that said, um, we're going to get into this today and it's going to be a really, really cool study. So I kind of have to preface that on every episode that I do just for new people coming in. I want you to understand what I'm about uh, so that there's no confusion. You don't have to agree with me, by the way, to be here, to learn, to interact in the community. I'm just giving my side of the equation here, my experiential data of what I hold to be the authentic or closer to the authentic narrative that has helped me rebuild my operating system of self or my mythos. Again, our acronym for mythos is the mind yielding the hope of spirit. 
Um, and that is, that's what our community is named after you guys that are in the community. Um, we've got a private community. It's nine bucks a month. It helps support what I'm doing. Uh, it's kind of like a Patreon type thing. And I work with that community a lot closer. Uh, I drop videos in that community every day. Um, we've got free resources in there, tons and tons of training videos, uh, that are accessed over on a private channel through that. Uh, just a really cool community. It helps me continue to do this full time. Uh, and continue to put out the free content that I do twice a day on the hour long podcast and then uh, other videos throughout the day and throughout the week. So lots of cool stuff going on here. But thank you guys for your support. Tearaway Face says, I think I missed the answer to my question. Sorry about that. Uh, where was your question? Let me see if I can find it. Um, Uh, don't really understand that question. So, uh, you can hit me up. Uh, there is a free Facebook group over on my website. All the resources that I talk about, by the way, from the paid group to the free group to our t-shirt designs, um, all of the books that we're studying from, they're all available on my website at cubcooker.com, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.com. So, uh, okie doke says you said spirit is something we all know we have. Uh, we don't all know this. Um, we all do know it. We know it when we are a child, when we are a little child. Um, and you did at one point, if you don't remember it now, then it's something you can recover. Um, and I can prove that by, you know, anyone that goes back to that childlike state, uh, Christ even spoke of that. It's that place of authentic knowing that you have oneness with God because you're not, you're not trying to justify God against anything. You just know that magic is real, you know, and it's like probably around some people guess as early as seven days, seven days old is when a child loses that sense of oneness with God. Um, because they know where the place of life was, even in the Gnostic gospel of Thomas, Christ says uh, that a wise man does not hesitate to ask a seven-day-old child where the place of life is, for he knows it well. Um, and so that, to me, that's a beautiful idea. And Christ, speaking of becoming like a child, um, you know, there's there's something beautiful in that, I think, because uh, I don't need proof. I don't need data. I don't need logic. I don't need, uh, I don't even need blind faith at that. It, you know, faith is like something you have to like work towards then I don't need that at that point. Cause I just know like you have true gnosis of like, you can hold out your hand and watch the world move. Uh, you can think something and see it. You can, uh, feel something and it manifests in your reality. You are by all intents and purposes, you are in the arms of God at that place. So wherever that was for you, most of us don't remember. There's like a threshold of when a child starts remembering, um, and most of us don't remember back that far, but that's how I get to that conclusion that we all knew it. We all know it. Uh, we're all a part of that kingdom of God from the day we're born and we just forget about it. And, and this, this channel is all about just recovering that place of knowing of where we all started from. So, um, what place can we ask, uh, out there questions like Moore's Tartaria dimensions involved? Uh, chakra flower art. That's probably a great place is on the free Facebook group. It's the cub Cooker supernatural podcast discussion group, long name, but the link to it is right over in my bio link. You can just tap on that. It says free Facebook group. Um, and that's a great place. You can jump over there, uh, ask stuff like that. If you want to dive deeper into not just out there questions, but like really like how do you build a, a, a new operating system in your life? How do you take everything that I'm talking about and like really just start to put hands on it um, and start to go down that rabbit hole of self and become new through that? Then the, the private group is going to be for you. There's a lot less people in that. Um, and I have it, you know, that's inherently when you put a price tag on something, you're going to have less than the free version. But with that, you're just going to have a lot more access and do a lot more of the work with me there. So, uh, either one is great. I'd love to have you in either or, um, and a lot of people are in both too. So both is great. Um, but make sure if you do for anyone that signs up, cause every time I, I go live, we've got somebody signs up for the paid group. Thank you guys. 
But when you do, please, this is just a PSA, please look for the email. It will immediately come to your inbox within like five minutes and there will be an invite to the Facebook group. Don't miss out on that because if you do, then you're not going to get any of the updates. Everything is through that Facebook group right now. Um, if Facebook ever, whatever, you know, then we'll, we'll find another place for the group, you know, but right now that's where the group is. I anticipate things like metaverse and stuff coming and we'll, we'll be able to move that group over seamlessly to that hopefully, uh, and have both, you know, the best of both worlds. So just gives a great place for us to communicate there. So, um, here we go into chapter five, uh, enough introduction. I think I've yacked long enough. So, uh, Getting into chapter five, they, you know, this is a kind of a skip here. We have chapter four and then chapter five. This is basically just a bunch of random fire, fired off sayings here. So, uh, but they were grieved. They wept greatly saying, how shall we go to the Gentiles and preach the gospel of the kingdom of the son of man? If they do not spare him, how will they spare us? Then Mary stood up, greeted them all and said to her brethren, do not weep and do not grieve nor be ir irresolute his grace will be entirely with you and will protect you but rather let us praise his greatness for he has prepared us and made us into men when mary said this she turned their hearts to the good and they began to discuss the words of the savior peter said to mary sister we know that the savior loved you more than the rest of the women Tell us the words of the Savior, which you remember, which uh, you know, but we do not, nor have we heard them. Mary answered and said, what is hidden from you, I will, I will proclaim to you. And she began to speak these words. I, she said, I saw the Lord in a vision, and I said to him, Lord, I saw you today in a vision. He answered and said to me, blessed are you that you did not waver at the sight of me for where the mind is there is the treasure i said to him lord how does he who sees the vision see it through the soul or through the spirit the savior answered and said he does not see through the soul nor the spirit but the mind that is between the d the two that is what he sees the vision and it is and then it cuts off here. So this is the end of chapter 5. Pages 11 through 14 are missing from the manuscript. So we don't know where he went with that. But again, there's a lot here to unpack. This may seem short. Uh, I have There's a friend of mine bought this, read it, and then made the statement what, that, you know, it was good, but there's just not a lot there. And I encourage you, if you guys get this book, you know, the one I have on my website is uh, by a certain author and translator. Absolutely love their work. And there's a ton of commentary around it that really helps expound upon it that I think is really, really inspired. With that said, when you do read the words and go, wait, there's not a lot here. There's only like four chapters and they're not even complete. Like, think about what's between the lines. Think about what's in the canonical Gospels and where this fits in between all of that, between Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Understanding who Mary Magdalene was. As I shared earlier, the church has spent centuries trying to make her the archetypal prostitute rather than the wife of Christ. And that's a very controversial thing. But, of course, Dan Brown made that popular. But it was very clear even, you know, kind of placed within the canonical gospels that Mary Magdalene was very, very special to Christ. Um, and was kind of the female half of him. Um, if you watch the movie, Mary Magdalene highly, highly recommend it. Um, it has Joaquin Phoenix playing Christ and then his now wife is playing Mary Magdalene. It is one of the most beautiful movies I've seen. The most mystical Jesus I've ever seen in a movie. It's very poignant and it really reveals this, deeper esoteric truth and understanding that we're talking about today. So, um, so Mary sees him in a vision and there's one translation of this. Um, and, and I, it's the one that I have on my website. Um, cause these are all translated a little bit different, but it actually says that, you know, blessed are you for you did not, you are not frightened at my true appearance. 
And I thought that that was really unique. Like the way I read it and the way in my head is like, she saw the being of Christ, not Jesus, the person. And here's why I love this book, guys. Here's why I'm teaching this. And I woke up today with, all right, Father, what am I going to teach? And boom, it's the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. Okay, here we go. And we're talking about fractal reality. We're talking about metaphysics. We're talking about transcendence and, and healing and moving forward. And it's just a perfect, it fits into everything we've been talking about here. Where the mind is, there is the treasure. You know, we've been taught and taught growing up, you know, where you put your money, that's what you value. Well, that makes sense, guys. But you got every church in the country right now, they're doing their, um, you know, their giving drives, you know, give money, give money, give money. And I get, they've got to. I do too. I, I sell every day that I do this. If I don't, I won't be here. But I try to do it in a different light. I'm going to go deeper with you within that. Um, and so with this, I love that idea that where the mind is, that's where the treasure is because where your mind is, that's going to cause you to spend money. That's going to cause you to not spend money. That's going to cause you to reach out to certain people. That's going to cause you to, uh, not reach out or to avoid certain people that is going to dictate everything about your life. The operating system of the mind, not just your brain, but everything that's happened to you, through you, with you, because of you, whatever you want to say, uh, for you. A lot of people say it happens for you. I think, you know, I try to view everything. It's hard sometimes, but everything is a teacher if I'm, a, if I'm perpetually a student. Um, so how do we, how do we do that? <laughs> Hi, Marvel. These, these afternoon live streams are hard for the dogs. Marvel gets, um, she gets a little needy this time of day, ready for mommy to come home. But I love that idea. You know, she saw a vision of him. She was not scared of it. You know, she wanted to know, like, where did that vision come from? Was it was it my spirit or was it my soul? And especially here in the West, we go spirit, soul, same thing. Uh, well, they're not. Not in, this, not in this belief system, not in the time of Christ. Spirit and soul being different. Uh, I'm not one to pretend to understand the difference because I'm not uh, exposed to that language like they were back then. She wanted to know where does that come from? Well, in the translation I have on my website, it says that it's actually the noose, N-O-O-S-E. Um, and so that being a place between soul and spirit, it would be what is called the higher mind. Um, and so the higher mind, we can translate that is where the vision is coming from. It is not coming from the brain or the spirit or the soul. It is coming from the higher mind, uh, a universal field of intelligence manifesting that vision, uh, literally a different dimension. Uh, if you get into this, this gets wild. Like that's why I love gospel of Mary Magdalene. When I read the book, I went, oh yeah, this is, this is cool. There's a lot here. Uh, and, and I shared the history of it earlier. Obviously, it's very old. Uh, this is not something somebody wrote like in the 60s, like going, oh, everything is all blah, blah, blah. Like, no, this is this is a very ancient uh, set of scriptures and doctrine and beliefs. And um, a lot of these Gnostic Gospels, some experts believe that they are more authentic than some of the stuff we have in the canonical Gospels. I can't vouch for either way. I don't know, but I do know that there's something in them that wakes something in me up. And I think that that's the nature of what a good gospel should do. It should wake something in the reader up. And for me, this does. So really just to like wrap this up on chapter five, are we seeing our own vision of the Christ? Are we trying to look at look for a historical figure to appear in the sky or some sort of glorified Christ that we think in our head, are we actually having an experience in that higher mind with the Christ? Maybe one that is not what we expected. Maybe one that we could be commended for saying, you know, blessed are you for you have not shuddered at my true appearance. I mean, that that's a thought. That is a consciousness expanding thought right there. Like, who is Christ to you? And that is transcendent of any religious affiliation. That is a universal idea of who the Christ is on a cosmic, interdimensional 
level who is the Christ through the higher mind, not the soul or the spirit, but the higher mind, who is he? And as we talk about a lot on here, the logos of God, the divine computation or the divine expression uh, is a very, very real thing. And we see it present in the fractal nature of reality. Um, everything is a massive pattern. Everything works together. All things work for the good of those who love the Lord. You know, we have all of those sayings, but do we really like practice? Do we really see it with the higher mind or do we really see how like this happened here and this happens and then this person came into our life and now I have this opportunity and like, and then this thing happened. I didn't think I was going to make it out of that. And then all of a sudden, oh, boom. And then we got this like, you know, and is that not the nature of salvation of Christ being the savior? not just in a historical act, but perpetually through reality, going in and rescuing people out of it, waking them up to the true gnosis of who he is. That's where I'm at with it, guys. And, and you might say, oh, this guy's a little woo-woo today. Well, we all need a little woo-woo, right? We all need a little woo-woo. Um... What are my thoughts on electrical gradient? I have no idea what that is. Again, you guys are smarter than me. A lot of this stuff, you have to give me context because I have to research. I have ideas and thoughts on things once I understand the context. But, um, And I think that's where some of the magic for this channel comes from. Not because I'm so smart, but because I do have insight once I'm given the data. And I can process that data against the data that I have already experienced and know is true. That's kind of where I operate from. So, uh, And then sometimes there's data that comes in that challenges everything I thought was true. And then I have to expand my consciousness again and open up and uh, figure out what works, what doesn't work, and continue that computation, continue that understanding, that larger understanding. So uh, we are all as smart as Google. Absolutely, absolutely. You want info, you can get it from Google all the time. Deanna, thank you for the rose. God bless you, my friend. I appreciate that. Um, so with that said, you know, what questions do you guys have? Um, that is the full chapter for this episode. I read chapter four this morning. That was chapter five. Um, I'll do eight tomorrow morning and then nine tomorrow afternoon. Cause I want this to be a full series of gospel of Mary Magdalene. Um, I'm working on organizing the YouTube channel where everything's going to live in playlists. They've redone playlists on YouTube. So Gives me a great way to organize stuff. I'm really excited about that. Just should be a treasure trove of information, insight, discussion, exploration together for you guys to go back to, whether it's, you know, in a month or a year from now or, or five years or whatever. Everything's going to be organized there in a, in a way that you can share with friends and family and continue to go back through these teachings as you need to. Again, everything is over on uh, the website, links to everything, including the audio podcast that this goes out to. Thank you guys for the likes. I appreciate it. Cody, what is up? Um, who else is here? Mr. God, welcome. Mr. God's in the chat now. Uh, How to VV, welcome. Uh, Rosie Marie, finally pushing this out to a few more people. It's been weird lately on the live stream. I'm not sure what the deal is, if they're doing updates or... Uh, I have no idea, but it's, it's weird. You know, sometimes we'll have, uh, literally like three to 4,000 people come across the live stream and, uh, there's my dog getting yakky again today. He's been like that all day. Um, you know, sometimes we have thousands of people on here and sometimes it's like hundreds and I don't understand the difference. I really don't, but integrity project first time here. Thank you for being here. I appreciate that. Um, so with that said, you know, that, that's a wild chapter. Um, you know, the disciples knew that Christ loved her. Um, Mary said this, she turned their hearts to the good. I love how this is laid out. Um, there's that idea. Toby Mac talks a lot about speak life. You know, he has that whole hashtag and everything. I love that. Um, and turning people's hearts to the good. Like, are we really doing that? Or are we trying to turn their hearts to doctrine? I think that that's one of the biggest questions. Like, there's a lot of things that we say, this is my core agreement, and this is this, and if I don't believe this, then what can I hold on to? And I'm kind of over all of that because 
it's just never done anything for me personally. So I just approach everything with an I don't know attitude. Try to understand the Christ as a much bigger, much more universal, much uh, more needed entity than we've tried to make him. Like what is that true form manifesting in the matrix over and over and over and over to bring what? What is salvation? It's a rescuing of well, what is he rescuing us from? Well, we've made that original sin. That doctrine came around about 300 years after Christ. Uh, the whole, you know, mankind is inherently sinful. And as we read earlier in Gospel of Mary Magdalene, um, they're asking, you know, like, where does sin come from? Uh, it was Peter. Um, yeah, he said, Peter said to him, and this is in verse, or this is in chapter 4, Verse 25, Peter said to him, since you have explained everything to us, tell us this also. What is the sin of the world? The Savior said, there is no sin, but it is you who make sin when you do the things that are like the nature of adultery, which is called sin. That is why the good came into your midst to the essence of every nature in order to restore it to its root. Okay, so we can take that and what he's really saying here is like reality is what you agree to. It's what you step into. It's what you manifest. And so Christ came in to release you from those manifestations, to allow you to return to the root of good in your life, to the God root, uh, that root of what is pure and true and loving does not exploit yourself and others, loves yourself, loves others, uh, wants to manifest good things or where that true root is that you actually come from uh, rather than these, you know, he talked all the time about like, you know, I am the vine, you are the branches. He talked about fruits, uh, the fruit, you know, is the fruit good, is the fruit bad? Uh, and I think it's just easy to see. It's easy to see when you look at things in that light where this is all coming from and how easily we've just twisted it and twisted it and twisted it and tried to make it and justify it. And the whole God of the old Testament thing and trying to justify him as the father of Christ just doesn't work in the light of these ideas, uh, specifically the Gnostic ideas. But even when you reread the, uh, canonical gospels, it still doesn't work. And it's, you know, like whatever it is, whatever that forbidden fruit is that causes your eyes to open up, and get there where you see this is a beautiful thing. And so a lot of people, it's, you know, certain traumas in their life. A lot of people, it's they're tired of the sin patterns. Uh, a lot of people, it's um, other experiences. You know, um, for me, it's been a combination of all of those. Like I got tired of all my sin patterns, all my addictions. I got tired of who I was to the point of I didn't even want to live. Uh, and I kept believing a doctrine about you know, Jesus, 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 and like just believe in him and everything will be okay. And really nothing was okay. And in fact, I was uncomfortable. I hated myself. I uh, didn't even want to, I didn't know what I wanted, you know. And now I'm at a place, I'm not a highly ascended guru or anything like that. But I'm finally getting to a place where there's some healing in my heart. There's some restoration uh, there's some genuine love for others around me. Uh, there is, you know, not patterns of addiction in my life like there used to be. Um, and, and that's a beautiful place to be, by the way. Um, and I'm not holding on to a certain doctrine saying, well, if you don't believe this, then I'm just saying, this is what I've experienced. Here's the patterns. Here is the pattern, by the way, everything is a fractal pattern. Um, we are operating out of these systems, these algorithms that are in us and wherever those roots go, we're going to be fed from that, from that soil. So are those roots going into the heart? Are those roots going into the flesh? And I think that that's ultimately what this is saying here is, you know, not that sin isn't in the world. Sin came into the world. Obviously we've all experienced it. There's not one person on here who haven't, who hasn't experienced it or maybe even gotten close to being destroyed by it. Um, but he, what he is saying is, um, you know, you make sin. It is you who make sin. God didn't make it. It's us that make it like we're manifesting it because we're agreeing to it. So quit agreeing to it and step into maybe a fresh vision of who the Christ is. Maybe a fresh vision. 
What would that look like if you had a fresh vision of who the Christ was? Would you be able to accept it? Amen. You are speaking so much truth, and it has uh, has all worked in my life also. Josh, thank you for being here. I appreciate that. Th- this is a weird message. Like We had a ton of people on this morning. We got 11 people watching right now. Um, I don't understand it, guys. Like I got really fired up this morning. I think this is a very sublime message today. Um, but I hope you who hear it and you who see it really receive it. And then it begins to manifest some healing in your heart, some ascension from limiting belief patterns, um, and just some fresh vision of who the Christ is like unrestrained from this physical ideology of one man, one time, one place, one sacrifice, this whole thing, and maybe let him be the cosmic the eternal, the thing that's already within you. Christ is within your heart, Josh Hendricks says. Absolutely. I completely agree with that. Um, And so if we could just go into that place and open our eyes to the knowing of Christ, again, not the Christian Christ, not the Western evangelical Christ, not the Judeo-Christian Christ, like nothing like that, guys. That is not the message I'm bringing. Uh, I'm bringing a message that, you know, I don't even want you to put a label on it. It's just a universal Christ, the fractal mind of God, the divine pattern that we're all a part of, uh, God in spirit and in truth, us manifesting the kingdom of God within us, rooting down into ourselves, into something that is true, loving, and filled with light, because it is there. And anything that tells you it's not there is karma that needs to be burned in your life, that needs to be uh, achieved higher than you need to move through that. Guys, this takes time. That's probably why there's 13 people watching this right now. And there's going to be a lot more, by the way. There'll be a lot watch this. Uh, That's why I never get worried. Like I said, sometimes we've got thousands on here. Today we've got tens. Um, But but whoever makes it this far and hears this, like... This is hard work, okay? It takes everything, everything I I don't know how to tell you. Uh, This is not like wake up and oh, I'm awake and everything's good. Like it it hurts. Um, People think you're crazy. People tell you you're a heretic or you're leading people to hell. I get that daily, okay? Daily. And it's frustrating. But I love you, and that's why I show up here and I keep doing it, whether it's for 10 people, 100 people, 1,000 people, 10,000 people. I know that in several months' time, tens or hundreds or even millions of people will have seen this message. And so I'm telling you this because you're going to suffer for it. He did. Is the servant greater than the master? Josh Hendricks says, me too, buddy. Absolutely, man. Prayers for you, my friend. He is love. Uh, before being crucified, he bottom lined us to love. John thirteen thirty four, Love in spite of integrity project says, amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Josh, I'm really sorry to hear that. And I'm glad that you have found a home now. I am. Praise God for that, and um, thank you for being here in this community. Um, let's see. Uh, what do you suggest uh, start reading first, Deannon? Uh Did you get them in the mail today? Um, and you got all four of the Gnostic Gospels? I'm, I'm guessing. You just comment, and I'll tell you which one to read first. Um, yeah, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. Um, I like Gospel of Mary Magdalene. I think Gospel of Thomas will give you like a great, great springboard to go read all of these others from. Um, Gospel of Thomas is definitely hard to take in because it's way out there from what you're used to, but you see the common threads between it and the canonical Gospels. So it's going to be easier to digest with that. Like you'll hear verses there that you're like, oh yeah, that's in like Matthew 14. Oh yeah, that's in Luke. You know, but then there's some wilder stuff around that and there's some of those verses that continue on into like what he actually said um, or what I believe he actually said. 
and it gets pretty cool. So I would highly recommend Gospel of Thomas Dean and t- as as a place to start. This is easy to do publicly here because it's it's you know four chapters. Gospel of Thomas is like a hundred and something logions. So, but each one is like a standalone idea, and you can talk for an hour on each concept. Like it, there's so much there. So, uh, Josh says uh, Thomas is really good. Yeah, so I would definitely start there. Uh, why is Christ always going into the wilderness and mountains uh, for his downloads? Absolutely. Uh, you know, off grid, you got to get off grid for this stuff. And, and I completely agree. Metanosis, um, that doesn't mean you have to like, you know, go live in a camper van or whatever. Some of these people that do, I think they achieve a lot higher mindset, a lot more connection, a lot deeper understanding. Um, you know, I'm actually looking for a van right now to, to camp in and stuff. I bought a Jeep this year, but it is, I absolutely love it. It'll get you to the top of the mountain, but uh, we've got these three dogs. Two of them are over a hundred pounds, and um, we're we're looking more for like a camper van type thing for the family, so we can travel more and try to enjoy more off grid time, while still being able to do this out of our house, out of our uh, you know in the city and everything. So, uh, but yeah, getting uh, I mean literally I read. Uh, in fact, I'm going to pull it up for you guys right now. It is in. Um, they're Great Danes, by the way. Uh, somebody asked what breed of dog. They are Great Danes. And then I'm going to show you guys some light codes I captured yesterday real quick, just as a bonus on this. Let me find. This is out of the Bhagavad Gita, by the way. Uh, this is why it's important to get off grid. I'm not saying you have to live off grid. I'm just saying, like, you better be going out into nature. You better be doing some yoga. You better be meditating, breathing, breathing. If you don't know how to do yoga or anything, just start by controlling your breath. Go out into nature, sit with your legs crossed, or just sit on a chair wherever you're comfortable and at kind of a repose position and just breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. Do that for uh, 20 minutes and it'll change your life. Do that all the time and it'll really change your life. So here is from the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, this is uh, Lord Krishna speaking. Who is the, the the incarnation, the avatar, the manifestation of God on earth, uh, much as we view Christ as so, but thousands of years before Christ. So I'm not even refuting that they might be the same entity, and I don't have an issue with that. I, that doesn't threaten my belief system whatsoever. Like, to me, Christ is the all. He is animation and everything. He is returning all to God. Um, and I think that that's a beautiful way to look at it. So from Denver to Israel, uh, with just one thought, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, portal hopper. That's awesome. Um, let's see. I received a download in Denver mountains, uh, that I was in Israelite in 24 hours. My, uh, art took me to Jerusalem. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Yeah, and and like being in tune and able to listen, like those type of downloads, they challenge everything we think the matrix is, like everything we want to agree that is real. And the more you experience those, the more you question everything. So these downloads, those are important. And you you can get them in your house, you can get them on your front porch, but you really get them. You really get them. Okay, hold on. Come on. It is Bark O'Clock. If you guys are new to the podcast, this is live and raw. So we get to do this every day. What's up, Annie? How are you doing? So anyway, here is uh, the quote I'm going to read. In fact, I'm going to move the iPad up so you guys can see it around my pretty face. I am ever present to those who have realized me in every creature, seeing all life as my manifestation. They are never separated from me they worship me in the hearts of all and all their actions proceed from me wherever they may live they abide in me and i absolutely love that wherever they live they abide in me because we are connected to the hearts of all guys like this is 
It's all here. It's here. It's in the canonical gospels. It's in the Gnostic text. It's in the Hindu text. It's in the Buddhist text. It's there, guys. We just keep missing it. We try to ignore it. We want to argue that my way is right and your way is wrong. When Christ has been in everything since the beginning of time, uh, the, the, the chrisen one, the anointed one, uh, we don't, he's not, uh, I don't believe associated with a certain culture. He is transcendent, timeless, universal. And that's what I love revealing here. Uh, and thank you guys for being here. Thank you for your support. I uh, hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Brand new shirts available. This is the kingdom within, um, beautiful, beautiful meditation in the wilderness shirt as we're talking about here. Uh, I've been working with some new art styles. I really love this one. I think it's beautiful. Uh, Y'all can grab it. We're doing 34 bucks for these shirts. They're premium uh, ring spun cotton, super, super soft. Um, and then they've got beautiful print on the front of them. So uh, I am going to do more all over print shirts, but they are more expensive. So you guys that are looking for stuff for Christmas here, gifts for friends and family, for yourself, We've got a whole shop that's being stocked right now. Everything's over at cubcooker.com. So you can check that out to support what we're doing. Um, if you are interested in joining the Mythos group, don't forget that that is available right now. It is nine bucks a month. You can click on it here. This is the website. Uh, support me and get access. That's how that works. And there's some, if you like what I'm doing here, Get ready to go deeper down the rabbit hole and just engage daily in a much deeper, more unique way within this community. I promise you guys some light codes. I posted them yesterday, but I want to talk about them. Here's the first light code. Um, I did a whole episode on light codes, so if you haven't watched that, you can go watch it. Here's the first light code. Um, these are some pine trees. I couldn't tell you what they are. Um, these are out at the park that I play Frisbee at every day. Not every day, but I try to play a lot. This was yesterday, right before the snow came in. Beautiful purple, blue, red sky. This is maybe 40 minutes before sundown. Uh, the sun was coming in beautifully through these red leaves that are on these pine trees, and they were super soft. This is what I loved about it. The light was so bright and harsh, yet so soft and filtered through these pine needles. Um, and you can just see like all of the little blips and stuff up here, lens flares and everything, but just the quality of light that was entering my retinas just, just filled me with so much, so much joy. I was in like the weirdest mood yesterday. I think I drove my buddy nuts that I was playing Frisbee with. Cause I just like, I had, it was firing all these ideas in my brain, just, uh, and, and not just my brain, but my whole consciousness. Uh, and I dropped a video yesterday. If you didn't see it, um, it's pretty wild. Just like about being out of time, out of place, out of season. I threw one of the Frisbees into a baseball diamond over here. And it's like, you could almost hear the fans over there, like during the summer and just realizing like, Summer here in West Texas was a few weeks ago. It was like 80, 90 degrees. And we still had games and stuff going on like that. Now there's like nobody there. The field had been combed. All the grass is dormant. Uh, all of the trees like literally in a week went from green to this this fiery amber color. And so I'm just here to tell you guys like these seasons move. Like you see these patterns. Like be a part of that pattern. It's so hard to find God when you're trying to follow like doctrine and think, well, uh, did I make him happy? Did I like just being in him makes him happy. Like just moving with him and like being in gratitude, being in love, be in love, be in love with life, with each other, with nature, with like everything, like just, you can feel that pattern and it's, it's present everywhere in the matrix or as we're calling it now, the holos, it's this holographic reality that you have an opportunity to play within. Here's another one. This is a ground shot. I love this one. Look at these. Um, you can see this blip right here. Uh, I don't know if you can right there. Some lens flares and stuff. These were coming off of the leaves towards the camera. Um, and then you can see the sun up here. Just absolutely beautiful, guys. Absolutely. Look at the purple up here, like little blips of purple up at the very top. It's all a divine fractal. This is as close as you zoom in, God is there. As far as you zoom out, God is there. 
He's in you. He's through you. He is no further away from you than yourself is to you. Um, everything is transcendent. Everything is this incredible reality of light and vibrations. It's pretty rocking, guys. What kind of camera do you shoot on? Uh, it's an iPhone 13. Uh, and I was a photographer for like 15, 20 years, photographer and videographer. So like I, I mess with the settings and focus on certain things like that. So, um, so I get some really cool shots, but, but all in all, no filter, you know, just, just really cool, really cool stuff. So yeah, like getting in nature. And again, that quote from Bhagavad Gita, like rooted in all, okay. Like we're rooted in everything and that's the nature of God. Like we are rooted in everything. And even in here, you know, talking about, um, that everything will resolve to its roots. The good came into your midst to the essence of every nature, every nature, by the way, not just human nature, animal nature, plant nature, energy nature, everything to restore it to its root, to its origin, to God. Mycelium networks, yes, absolutely, metanosis. Oh, we'll, we'll do a whole, I want to get, uh, what's his name on here? Netflix did a whole documentary. I can't even remember. Uh, Stamantis, I think is his last name. Um, and he's the scientist that does all the mycelium research and it's, whew, it's, it's wild. It's wild. Everything is connected. The trees communicate. We communicate. The trees breathe. We breathe like it's, uh, I think one of the, the, especially in the spiritual community, I'll say this too, the idea of the matrix is maybe one of the most destructive ideologies for really finding God. Cause you start to look at even nature. Cause I went through this myself. I did a bunch of teachings on the matrix and it's like, Oh, like everything is like a false mirror of what really is like, but then I realized that you can actually wake up in the 5d earth and everything becomes real again. Like you see the light flares, you see different colors, you see good in people, you love people, like you literally are in a different reality and that matrix is melting away and you're starting to experience more of what's really there. Like, it's not just that like we have to wait till we are, you know, we pass away on this earth to then step into the true reality. Like we can be here now, like be here now. What is it? Uh, George Harrison, be here now. I love, love, love that thought. So I watched Da Vinci Code Awakened. Oh my, yeah, I did too the other night. And whoa, it is wild. Like, I, there's so many things I didn't catch. By the way, random side note for you guys that are still on here. Thanks for being here. I'm watching Stranger Things 4 right now. And there is Gnosticism all over that. I don't know if anybody has caught it before or if the Duffer Brothers really are or they intended it or it's just like, the nature of like Christ in the matrix that like truth is always breaking through uh, substance seven, seven, seven says um, same. Absolutely. Um, that was filmed where I live. Josh says, awesome. Awesome. So they talk about L like I watch with subtitles. Cause just like my hearing isn't great. Cause I used to do a lot of table saws and work in wood shops and stuff. Um, and, and then sound systems and theater and everything. So, um, you know, hard of hearing sometimes, at least my wife says, but, um, I, I watch with subtitles on and I just notice a lot in the script, the scripture of the show, um, that like L and, and this is spoiler alert. If you haven't watched stranger things Four, go ahead and click off now. I'll end it after this. So you're, you're safe if you click off now, but, um, L in the last season, um, is kind of figuring out her past and like who she truly is and how that out of like the same program came her and this evil archetype of her. Okay, Gnosticism all over it, Yal de Bayoth, Demi Urge, and then the true El Elyon, uh, Theos, the father, um, like El and El. And then uh, the, the demon in this is really just um, someone who succumbed to the pain rather than moving into the love. And it's pretty, it's pretty wild. It's basically like, and if you even look up the name of the demon in the mythological lore that it's named after, uh, it says lesser God. And so if you look at the show, 
L is the God, the rescuer God, like the, the Christ figure within it almost. And, uh, the Vecna is, uh, the, the lesser God. If you look up the actual mythology of it, um, pretty wild guys. I'll have to check out stranger things. Uh, got heavy chills list just listening. Yeah. And by the way, let me say something else. I am going to be releasing a lot of music this next year. Um, hopefully with some synthesizer type stuff, real synths, by the way, vintage ones that actually use scientific technology, different types of tubes and resistors to create patterns and sound waves. And I'm going to be doing, uh, what's called generative music. So it's not me like just playing something. It's me setting up an experiment and letting it play itself. And, uh, they can be affected by your consciousness around it. You can plug them into different things like plants. I'm going to get the little plant wave where you can plug it into plants. The book I'm about to come out with is for a working title called Patterns, and it's a meditation book. And so it's going to be, it's not scripture or anything. It's just my, like a meditation that you can go through each page. It's going to have the AI artwork, the meditations in it, where you can have something to meditate on that is, Outside of any doctrine or dogma, it's just like a transcendent truth you can you can latch on to. This will be available for Christmas, hopefully in print, if I can get it through Amazon in time. Um, and then I'm going to turn that into a music album that's going to have this generative music uh, with the lyrics over it. And I'm going to collaborate with some other people for that. Uh, really cool stuff coming. So with that said, synth music, real synth music. Uh, is using vibrations and frequencies that really are there. Um, not that digital music isn't, but you're going to get a whole lot more warmth out of it. And the patterns that it's going to display are more nature type patterns. Um, and it's, that's why like deep synth music, like legit, like seventies, eighties, uh, deep synth music has like such an, a visceral and ephemeral effect on you. Um, not only evoking, nostalgia but actually moving into the patterns of your biology like it's pretty wild when you start studying like legit scientific synth um it's pretty cool books and synth music cometh yes absolutely substance 777 what's up birds of encouragement welcome uh they have some uh crazy meditation apps for the vr goggles yeah and we're definitely going to do a whole meditation group in the metaverse as soon as that's out like we're going to legit like go in there together and do the work because I can do the work a whole lot more than I can on something like this when we can like see each other we can have a conversation then we can go into the meditation it's going to be wild guys like we have some really cool connectivity coming uh you know a lot of people say oh with all this nobody's going to be with each other blah blah blah. like oh it's jokes on them consciousness is about to elevate guys like we're going to get so much more together time people that I can't be there with you you guys that are in Denver you guys that are uh up uh up north or in we've got other countries on here today too like uh we're gonna be able to be together like our consciousness can connect even virtually so i'm pretty pretty pumped about that so but anyway here's your light codes from yesterday watch stranger things see if you see the deep like gnostic roots in it kind of that universal story of like god being rescued like christ rescuing people to god and god to people like it's this it's this wild concept uh, collective consciousness. Absolutely. So, but yeah, stranger things four gets a deep on it. Even Hopper at one point is talking and he's like, we're going to need a miracle if we're going to get out of this prison and find L and Mikel. Okay. Find L L Elyon and Archangel Michael, like the highest angel, like what? Like how, this is in stranger things, you know, 99.99% of people completely miss any of these messages and I'm not saying they're hidden there by people like is a conspiracy or anything like some people say. I'm just saying like truth breaks through. Like somebody may have an idea. They don't even know where that idea is. It's coming from the divine mind and it's there because truth is always there. If light is there, truth is there. I love you guys. Have a beautiful day. I'm going to see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. I am going to be going live with Joshua from Sons of God Ministries. It looks like Wednesday night. I will release the exact time later on Facebook, let you guys know there. Um, and we're actually going to talk about magic and the deep esoteric magic of Christ. Uh, the Magi, we're going to talk about the magicians of the Bible. Why did the Bible say that magic was bad and who was that really written for? Because it may not have been written for you. So be sure and miss that episode. Do not miss that episode. Blech, if I can talk, 
be sure and do not miss that episode. Uh, it will be Wednesday night, so I will not have my 3 p.m. live stream on Wednesday, but rather it's going to be at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, 7 Eastern, um, and I'll I'll announce officially tonight once I confirm with him, but it looks like it's all going to happen. So looking forward to that. Love you guys. Y'all have a beautiful night. Thank you so much. Uh, do a little disconnecting. Go catch you some light codes. Love to all. Love you, Annie. Thank you. Love you, Meta X. Love you, Deanna. Uh, love you, Lisa Marie. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, Y'all have a beautiful night. I will see you tomorrow. Peace.